Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to be covering confidence interval when sigma is actually known. Now, here we have our question. We measure the heights of 40 randomly chosen men and get a mean height of 175 centimeters. We also know the standard deviation of all men's heights is 20 centimeters. Construct a 99% confidence interval of the true mean of all men's heights. Now, in this problem, we see one thing that's really, really important. We see that sigma is known. We also know this because the standard deviation is coming from the population of all men's heights, meaning we have a population standard deviation. However, we see that we have a sample mean, which is quite all right in this case because we have our 40 randomly chosen men, and their heights have an average of 175 centimeters, right? And so what our goal is here is to find the confidence interval of 99% for these values. So let's make a note of everything we know from what the question has given us. We know that our sample is 40 men. We also know that the average the best point estimate in this case is the x bar, the sample mean of 175 centimeters for the 40 men that were randomly selected. We also, we also know the standard deviation of, those for, of all men's heights to be 20 centimeters. Besides this, we also know our confidence level. And in this case, our confidence level is 99%. And before we even begin anything else, I just want to talk about this confidence level thing. Now, we know three common confidence levels that exist, right? And of those confidence levels, we know the critical values for Z. In this case, we're using Z because this is a population standard deviation from using a population of all men's heights and the standard deviation of all men's heights, and also sigma is known. So this is a normal distribution we're using, and our N is greater or equal to 30 which means we can use the normal distribution of the z values. Now, the, the three most important things is to define our critical values and our critical z values, right? So confidence levels and critical z's. Our critical z values are the critical values generated by the confidence levels. And we have three confidence levels. We have 90%, 95%, and 99%. Now, for 90% for confidence, our critical Z value is going to be 1.645. For 95% confidence levels, we're going to have a critical value of 1.96. And for 99% confidence levels, the critical value is going to be 2.5. 76. Now make sure that you're getting this from your instructors because they should be providing you with these on a formula sheet. Or you can just ask them about them um, discreetly if you can during an exam because mostly these are always given in the formula sheets and you should always have these provided for by your instructors. Uh, namely because this is given with a typo on some sheets uh, as 2.575 where it should be 2.576. Now, to conduct the actual confidence interval, what we're going to have to do is get a few values. Mainly, we know our best point estimate, which is the mean. And we're going to subtract our margin of error, which we have to calculate. And this is always less than the mu value, which is always generally mu, representing the true mean. And here we have, again, the best point estimate plus the margin of error, where the margin of error is equivalent to the critical z value times the standard deviation of the population over the square root of the number of samples. And so to do this, what we want to do is we want to first generate our margin of error so that then we can just apply it to the mean, subtracting it and adding it to the mean. And this makes the work a lot easier. So let's generate a margin of error here. So here we have our E-value. And our E-value is our Z-critical. Again, we have a 99% confidence level, so we're using 2.576, right? And after we have the 2.576, what we're going to want to do is then multiply this by the standard deviation, which is 20, and divide that by the square root of the number of samples, which is 40 here in this case. So let's go ahead and calculate these things. I'm going to just grab my phone for calculation so we can get on with this calculation. Now, here what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply the tops here together, right? So we have 2.576 times 20. 
and that's going to give us 51, 52, divided by the square root of 40. And now to divide that with the square root of 40, we have 8.146, and this continues on and on. We're going to just round this up to two decimal places because our mean is just three digits with a whole number on it, right? So we're, gonna, we're just going to cut this off at 8.1. All the other numbers, are neglect, that we can neglect them. And this gives us our values. Now, the next step in this case is to take our mean, our best point estimate, and generate this actual formula by plugging in our E value of 8.1 into this equation with 1.175. So now we have 175 centimeters minus 8.1, less than mu, less than 175, plus 8.1. And here when we're subtracting, we're going to get one, let's calculate this here too. For accuracy, I'm using a calculator. S should you. And here we have 166.9, less than mu, less than 183.1. And so our confidence interval for the true mean of all men's heights is between 166.9 centimeters to 183.1 centimeters. Thank you.